that was fast, and that was a great job you guys did getting this, this stuff out here. Um, could we have a round of applause for our stagehands this morning? <laughs> Well, this morning I want to continue uh, with part two of Release to Thrive, the last, the last week of our Thrive series uh, for, the, uh, for the beginning of this year. Last Sunday morning, if you were with us, uh, we began talking about the principle of first, the principle of, of God being first and essentially being, being the center of our lives in, in every single way. Um, I just encourage you, if you weren't here last Sunday, to... Uh, to go back and watch last Sunday's message um, on, on our website or on our YouTube channel. Um, but this morning, we're going to continue. We're going to continue. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this principle of first, the principle of, of tithing in first fruits. And we're going to have a, an illustration here at, at the end. But I believe this is so important because as we began to establish last Sunday morning, this whole topic that we're talking about is not about money. It's not about money. Um, it's all God's. He owns it all. He probably doesn't need our money. He's okay. okay. Um, and uh, so as we learned from Scripture last Sunday, and we'll see ag again this morning, uh, it's about our hearts. It's about our hearts. Um, God tied the two together because it was that significant and that important. He said, wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So it truly is money, in God's eyes, is all about the heart, how we steward finances, how we steward money. Uh, it is indeed a heart issue. Um, Jesus talked about money in the Bible second only to love. And so we see it uh, taught on the principle of first in our lives from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation as we begin to establish that last Sunday morning. So this morning, I just want to open up by asking you a question. Um, how much would you say that you love and trust God? How much would you say that you love and trust God? And I want you just to maybe... Um, uh, Think to yourself and maybe say it out loud in your, in your head how much you love and trust God. For some of you, you're probably sitting there right now and you're saying, I love and trust God completely, totally, 100% with every part of my life, with everything in my life, with everything that I am and everything that I have. I, I love and trust God completely. Some of you might be sitting there this morning and you might say, well, I, I, I like to think that I do. Um, you might be saying, well, I think I do, but if I'm really honest, I, I, I probably have held back in some areas as far as completely and wholly trusting God. So the next question I have for you this morning is this, for, for all of us who, who really feel like and believe that we really trust God completely... Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? A lot of times we're, 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 we're pretty, um, it's pretty easy for us to, or let me just ask this question. Has it ever been easier for you to, to spend somebody else's money than your money? Maybe, especially as a teenager, I, have a, I had a couple of teenagers who, who at, at, time, at one time, man, it was easy for them to spend dad's money. Um, but when they had a little bit, hold on, hold on. Dad, I need some tennis shoes. Okay, well, you've got some money, right? Well, I don't want to spend my money uh, on, ten, on the tennis shoes. You know, it, it can be easy for us to, to, to spend and even trust God for somebody else or trust God with someone else's money in particular. Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is? I would suggest to you this morning this that God is testing you. God is testing you. Anybody love a test? No, <laughs> probably not. Anybody good test takers? Um, we have good test takers, bad test takers. Most of us uh, grew up in life probably not enjoying 
test, whether we were good test takers or bad test takers, um, not enjoying tests. But I would submit to you this morning that God is testing you, and the test is this. Will you love and trust money, or will you love and trust God? Will you love and trust money, or will you love and trust God? Again, I want you to remember this morning, this isn't a message about money. He doesn't need your money. I don't want your money. Notice I didn't say need. I don't want your money. Um, God doesn't want it, doesn't need it. This message won't put another penny in my pocket in any way. Um, this, this message, this principle is all about our hearts. Do we trust God and how much do we trust him? Will you love and trust money or will you love and trust God. In Luke chapter 16, verse 10 and 11, this is in the New Testament, the Bible says this, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Now, I want you to just kind of take special notice of verse 11 there because it kind of sounds to me like um, God is kind of equating worldly wealth to the little things, the, the, the most minute, the little things. In other words, if I can't trust you, if you can't be trusted with little, and then he immediately goes to if you can't be trusted with worldly wealth, in God's eyes, it's very little. Worldly wealth, the things that so many of us put so much of our focus and attention and concerns and, and stresses and anxieties and focuses on, God says is very little. And if I can't trust you with the least of things, who of you can be trusted with true riches? Money promises what only God can provide. Money promises lots of things in this life that only God can provide. Things like security, things like freedom, things like power, things like significance. All of these things, just to name a few, are things that money seems to promise us. We seem to think that if I have money, if I had more money, um, I would feel secure. And, and isn't, that, isn't that true for most of us? Isn't it true that most of the time, unless we have really grown and become mature, mature in, 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 in various ways and put much of our trust and faith and confidence in God, for many of us, that sense of security rises and falls based on how much money is in the, in the checking account. We feel great when there's plenty in the bank account. Man, if we get some kind of blessing, you know, we got an inheritance, or grandma left us $10,000, or, or we got a, a $5,000 uh, tax return, man, for those first few weeks that that money's sitting there, we just feel so strong. We just feel so, so secure because there's, there's not only some money, but there's more than we're used to. There's extra there, and we have this sense of security. Only as soon as it's gone, as soon as it's down to kind of paycheck to paycheck, if you will, man, where'd that security go? Money promises things that only God can really provide. Freedom, freedom. A wise person, a friend of mine that I consider to be a wise person, he once told me, he said, Tori, he said, money, money won't make you happy. Money won't make you happy. He said, it just kind of lets you... Uh, uh, do some, do some things that you might not be able to do. It just, it just, but um, it does give you some, some free things that you might not be able to do. Now, that, that can be true, again, for a little while, as long as the money's there, or as long as enough money's there to do the things that you want to do. Money promises power, power. There are many people in this country, and we, we see it on the news all the time. We see people around this world who we look at, and in certain, in certain ways, they are powerful people because of their money. 
We can think of those people. We can name those people off the top of our heads, some of the wealthiest people in this country, and we associate them with as being powerful people because they have so much money. According to God's word, this, this is a false sense of power. It can be here today, gone tomorrow, and none of us, we've all heard this before, none of us can take it with us. And there's a whole other life, a life of eternity after this one. So it's a false sense. It, all, it, it falsely gives us a sense of, of significance in this world as well. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. He will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. He said, you cannot serve both God and money. Why, 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 would, he, why would he even say you can't serve God and money. Why wouldn't he say you can't serve God and technology? You can't serve God and popularity. There's so many, because I believe because so many of us do, because we, we put in it our security. We put in it, again, this false sense of freedom, security, power, significance is based around money in this world. There's nothing wrong with money. Nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, it's, isn't it good to have some? <laughs> It's good to have some, and most of us would say it would be even better to have a little bit more. Nothing wrong with, with money. Uh, money enables us and, 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 and allows for us to do some wonderful things in this life, and there's nothing wrong with money. We're going to get to that in just a minute. The wisest man, according to the Bible, that, that ever lived, and, and, and also probably the wealthiest man that's ever lived, said this, whoever loves money never has never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. Malachi 3.8 says this, Will a man rob God, yet you rob me? But you ask, how do, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You're under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Malachi 3.8. Robbing God. Last week I said, made this statement that from cover to cover, I have, I have read the Bible and, and, and studied this topic on the principle of first and this principle on, on money and tithing and giving. And as far as I can tell, we have two choices throughout Scripture, two choices with the tithe. We're going to talk about what the tithe is in a second. But we have two choices. You can either bring it to the house of God or you can steal it. It's one of the two. From cover to cover, I see no other uses for it but to bring it to God's house, to bring it and offer it to God, or we steal it and we rob God. So I want to go over, over with you this morning the blessings and the benefits, blessings and, and benefits of the tithe, of, of releasing and bringing this to God and trusting God with, and God with it. Number one, tithing provides for God's work through his church. We say this all the time, we don't give to a church, we give through a church. And tithing provides for the work of God through his church. Malachi 3.10 says, bring the whole tithe into the, the storehouse, modern day equivalent, the church house. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Now, I mentioned some of, these, some of these things last week, but some of you may not have been here last week. I want to say it again for those of you that weren't here, but just to alliterate what this means when we bring the tithe to the storehouse, how we were able to have food in this house, how we were able to, to not give to a church, but through a church. In 2021, uh, 2021, we were able, because of the faithfulness of each and every one of you, because of bringing the tithe to the storehouse and give, giving your offerings to the Lord, we were able to do 21, 000, make $21,000 in upgrades to this facility in our campus. Um, Away, 
in-house and outside of this house, $21,000 in benevolence. That's just helping people that just have had various needs that came to us and said, hey, we're struggling. This is our situation. Can you help? Why, yes, we can because there's food in this house. Um, we've been able to help people with counseling through the pandemic, even in 2021. Through 12 Baskets Ministry, we were able to serve 6,315 people through our food food pantry with, absolutely, handing out 50,000 pounds worth of food, um, 50,000 pounds worth of food. Just this week, just, just uh, a couple of days ago, we were able to purchase four tra- tra- uh, t- 12 baskets, a much-needed enclosed trailer that they'll be able to use to, to pick up our food from the food banks in Atlanta for $4,500. We were able to make that purchase. We were able to give away uh, $13,000 to send to our missions department in Cleveland, Tennessee. Um, and over the next couple of weeks, we will hand out 67, over $67,000 Uh, here in our community and abroad to help children locally and globally because of the sacrifice that you made um, serving in, in, uh, in, in our Biotree Change of Life project. We were able to hire two additional very significant, very crucial staff members, our youth pastor, Zach and Abby Louder, and our children's pastor. Yeah, give it up for Zach and Abby. And our children's pastor, Amanda Hale, we were able to, to bring them on onto our staff. We were able to do ministry inside of this house that impacts and affects ministry outside of this house. We have over 100 people in house groups and small groups. We were able to, to provide classes and events and outreach, outreach events. We were able to pay down our mortgage over seven. Um, we were able to see because of being able to continue to have church and to have church online and to, to be able to pay the bills and keep the lights on and keep all this ministry going, we saw commit their lives to Jesus and 21 people be baptized in the name of Jesus. How? How do we do that? How are we able to do this? Because we give through a church and not to a church. God expects us to be conduits of of our resources, not reservoirs of his resources. And as a church, we will be a conduit of the blessings, a conduit of the tithes, a conduit of the resources that come to this house, and not a reservoir of it. As long as he can get it through us, I believe God will continue to get it to us to fund the ministries of the local church. And here's the kicker. You can't outgive God. Can't not outgive God. He does math on a different hemisphere, on a different plane than we do. And because of God's math, because we said, hey, we're not going to hold on to this and, and hoard it. We're not going to be afraid of the circumstances and, and, the, and the environment that, that we're in currently. We're going to continue to do ministry. We're going to continue to be a conduit. Because of that, we gave away all of that money in 2021, and we still ended up $46,000 above budget. That's God's math. That's how you cannot outgive God. Number two, tithing teaches me to put God first. Tithing teaches me to put God first. I love Deuteronomy 14, 23. The Living Bible Translation says it this way. The purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. Every time I write that tithe check, it's a reminder, God is first. God is first. He will provide for me. He is the center of my life. Every time I go online and type in and pay my tithes and give an offering, I'm reminded that God is first in my life. It reminds us to put God's first. It says every time I write the tithe check, every time I bring the tithe to the storehouse, it says, God, I think that you can do more with my money than I can do with it. God, I trust you more with my money and with my provision than I trust myself. And the opposite is true of that as well. When I hold that back from God, when I go against his, his word, his principles of first, of God, uh, 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 of, of God first throughout the scripture, and I go against that, I'm saying, God, 
I trust what I can do with this income better than I trust what you can do with it. Tithing helps me to put God first in my life. The third thing is this. Tithing increases my faith in God. Test me in this, says the Lord. It's the only place in Scripture where God says to test him. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not <clears throat> throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. It is, it is a, a matter of faith, and God says, test me in this. Test me. Have faith in me. Just have faith in me. Just give me a shot and see if I will not pour out a blessing that you will not have room for. Jesus said this about the tithe, again, equating it and lumping it in to an interwoven uh, uh, faith, this part of the DNA of our faith. Jesus said in Matthew 23, 23, he said, you know, you're careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens. Now, remember, he's talking to people that have been taught about and practicing tithing for hundreds of years, for generations, going all the way back to the book of Genesis, to the book of Leviticus and Exodus and Numbers, all way back into the, the Old Testament, Jesus is saying to them, talking to them about essentially their faith. And he says, you're careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. Yes, you should tithe, but don't neglect the more important things. He just lumps it in there with things like justice and mercy and just, love, just normal parts of our faith. Tithing is a part of that. And Jesus talks about it like it's just commonplace, that of course you should tithe and you're careful to do it. Don't forget these other things too that are a part of your faith. So I want to share with you now what I'm just going to call the blessed test. The blessed test. Again, the principle of first, putting God First, it's not about um, uh, just giving to God, but it's about giving in such a way that it establish him, establishes him as first in our lives. Leviticus 27 and 30 says this, a tithe of everything from the land. Now, we, we know what a tithe is from last week. A tithe is simply a tenth. So it would be 10%, a tenth of everything. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to who? The Lord. He's, remember last week in the passage we read, he said, it is mine. It is mine. It, I own it. It belongs to me. It's my property. He said, it belongs to the Lord. It is holy. It's a holy thing. The tithe is a holy thing. It's the part that when we give it first, then God can bless all of the rest. It's the faith that initiates the blessing on the rest. So we give it first, and he only accepts it when it's the first part, and it is given first. Then and only then is the rest blessed. So here's the challenge. The challenge is this. I challenge you to say this and make this a part of your a part of your, your mantra. I will give God my first and my best so he can bless the rest. I will give God my first. This is the principle of first. I will give God my first and my best so he can bless the rest. Now, here's why it has to be first. It requires faith to give the first. If you give last, it doesn't require faith. If you give third or fourth or fifth, it doesn't require faith. It requires faith to give the first. That's why last week in our study, we said God didn't ask, he didn't ask the people to bring a lamb after they had already received 10. He said, give me the first lamb, and then all the rest of your lambs will be blessed. It's that principle of first. It has, must, to be fir must be first. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says this, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops filled to overflowing. Again, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. So I want to demonstrate this this morning, and, and many of you have seen this illustration this morning. Um, but it's an illustration to show just what an amazing blessing God is to us. 
and his request to bring us the first and to bring us the tithe, or to bring, and to bring him the tithe. So it kind of goes like this, and I'm going to ask my assistant, Carson, to come to the stage. Would you give her a big hand? So Carson is coming to the stage because her dad has a bad back, <laughs> and, um, and she's going to help me this morning. But uh, most of you know that, that um, I, I, I am truly a farmer. Um, that is what I do, and it's what I do well. I know everything about farming that there is to know, so that's why we're doing this illustration this morning. And those of you that actually know me know that that is not the truth. Um, but as an illustration this morning, let's just say, let's just say that I am a farmer. Um, could be anything. Could be could be a, a, a rancher. Could be um, could be a teacher. Could be a doctor. Could be an investor. Could be could be anything. We're going to use farming is our example this morning. Let's say I'm a farmer, and it's been a really good year. It's been a great year, and, and God has blessed me with a great crop. And it just so happens that, um, um, you know, I happen to grow cantaloupes, happen to grow cantaloupes. And so God has blessed me with a cantaloupe crop. So you know what he says to do? He says, bring the first of your first fruits to the Lord. And I will bless the, le- the, bless the rest. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the very first one to God. He says, bring the first one to me. You know, what you know what he says next? He says, you get to keep the rest. Bring me a tenth. So if I had ten cantaloupes, which I did, that's how many I had this year in my crop. I had ten cantaloupes. So God gets one. Guess what that means for me? That means I get ten I mean nine, rather, of these amazing cantaloupes. Nine amazing cantaloupes. Wow, thank you, God. Thank you for my nine cantaloupes. God's been good to me, right? doesn't look too bad. I mean, that's not a whole lot for God to ask of me. Just one, I get to keep the nine with his blessings. That's a pretty good deal, wouldn't you say? Well, it just so happens that um, um, not only do I grow cantaloupes on my farm, I also grow yellow peppers. And um, God blessed me with 10, a harvest of 10 this year. So I'm going to give God the first one. I'm going to give God the first one. That means I get to keep how many? Nine. Nine of these beautiful yellow peppers. Occasionally, Publix likes to come to my farm and put a little sticker on my peppers. Um, Sneaky little Publix people. (laughs) I tell you what. I get to keep nine of these amazing. God is, God is good to me, you know. He doesn't ask for much, does he? Um, I also, on my farm this year, happened to have a crop of red peppers, and they are so delicious that I want to choose the very best one in the first one that I pluck, the first one that I harvest from the pepper bush um, or whatever they came from <laughs> to God, all right? That means that I get to keep how many? Nine. Not only nine, but nine with God's blessings. Nine of these gorgeous red peppers with the blessings of God on them. He's so good to me. He loves me so much. Thanks for providing, God. I also happen to have on my farm this year some green peppers, and they were absolutely gorgeous this year. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm just going to give God the best and the first because he's been that good to me. And he said, I get to keep the rest. I happen to have 10, so that means I get to keep nine of these gorgeous peppers. And they are so such a great crop this year. Thank you, God, for blessing my crops. I thank you so much. 
He's been good to me. God been good to any of you this year? He's been good to me. Um, so on my farm, um, I love, love, love to eat, as you know, eat healthy food, um, nutritious food. And, um, and so the sweet potato is one of the healthiest foods that, that you can eat. And so I planted some sweet potatoes on my farm. And because God blessed me with the sweet potato crop, I'm going to give God the very first and the best, and I'm going to give God my very first sweet potato. And he said, you know what? You can keep the rest. You can keep the other nine for you, Tori, because you, you love to eat healthy all the time. And so eat those sweet potatoes because, man, they are so nutritious. I made those for you, and, and you can just enjoy all of the sweet potatoes with lots of butter and lots of sugar and lots of cinnamon on top of those sweet potatoes, so they're extra, extra special. Um, so next, in, in, at, my, at my farm over at Heron Acres, um, I actually have a little cucumber uh, section where I grow cucumbers. And this year, the cucumbers were just beautiful. God's just really blessing me. So I'm going to give God the very first and then God said, you know what, Tori? I'm going to bless the rest. You keep the rest of those cucumbers for yourself. Um, so since I gave you 10, you get to keep nine of those cucumbers. I'm starting to have a blessing that I cannot even contain, as the Bible says. Um, it's just kind of starting just to kind of overflow as he promised, he would pour out a blessing that so big that I would not even be able to contain it. Um, but God wasn't finished with me yet because I said, God, we'd love to have some squash this year. And so he blessed me with the squash crop as well. Um, so I said, God, I'm going to give you the first. You said, bring the first to me. And so I'm going to bring that to you. And he said, well, why don't you just keep the rest of the squash for you? And I'm just going to bless those other nine squash. They will have my blessings all over them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, I said, you know, um, Lord, I would really like to try some celery <laughs> this year in the on the farm <laughs> it's so <laughs> so I'm going to give you the first God the first celery wand that comes up <laughs> and he said you just keep the rest for you um, <laughs> yeah, yeah and uh, on my farm um, you know, I'm getting up there in age a little bit, so I said, God, I better have some carrots this year to help with the old eyesight, and so he, he gave me a great and bountiful carrot crop, um, and it was an unexpected blessing. I didn't even know that I was going to get carrots. I just said, God, I could use some, you know, help with the vision, and I was praying, and he answered the prayer, and all of a sudden, carrots started coming up <laughs> in my farm, um, an unexpected blessing, and I thought, well, God, I didn't really plant the carrots. I wasn't expecting it. Do I, should I tithe off of that? And he said to me, you know, well, would you consider that increase? And I said, well, sure. It was an unexpected blessing. And so I said, well, you'll even get the first tenth of that as well. And so I gave God the first carrot. And he said, Tori, you just keep the rest of those carrots because your eyes are getting pretty bad. <laughs> But I will bless you. You know, I love apples. I love red apples. Happen to have an apple tree on the farm. And man, those apples came in. And, and I just said, God, I'm going to give you the first. You know, so I gave God the first apple. And he said, Tori, you just keep the rest. You keep the other nine apples for you and for your family, and it's going to be blessed. Your house is going to be blessed. You're going to be eating healthy. You're going to be running out of room to even keep all this stuff in the pantry. It's going to be amazing.
Love those red apples. Anybody love red apples? If you stick around for the second service, you can help yourself to, to some of this produce right here from, from Heron Acres. Um, so one of the things that I really love is bananas. And so we have a banana bush on our farm as well. And um, so when the bananas came in this year, I said, God, you know, got to give you the first. And he said, well, you just keep the rest for you and it will be blessed. So that's what I did. I just said, okay, I'll keep the rest. And, and then I said, God, you know, not everybody likes red apples. Somebody likes those, those green apples. And so some of those came in this year. So I gave God the first. You know, it's just what I do. It's just what I know to do. He said, you keep the rest, Tori. And not only will we, not only you will have we, enough for your family, but there's probably a good chance you'll have enough to bless other families with as well. That when someone else is hungry, someone else has a need, you might just be able to say, hey, just come over to my house, or hey, let me help you out. I also love oranges. Anybody love oranges? Man, had a great orange vine growing up at the, um, at the farm this year. And so I said, hey, God said, bring me the first and the best, and I will bless the rest. You get to keep the rest, but the rest will have my blessings all over it. And finally... We have a grape tree at the, at the Heron Farm. And so, I say, God, I'm going to give you the first that comes out. And he said, you, Tori, just keep all of the rest. Thank you, Carson. Now, Here's what the Bible says. The Bible goes on and says this. When we give God the first fruits, when we give him the tenth, the tithe, and it's the first of our first fruits. He says that he will pour out a blessing that will just roll off the table. <laughs> just cannot contain it. And when I look at it like this, what God asks of me doesn't seem that significant to what God says I get to keep, does it? Especially when he says, this portion will now be blessed. We just happen to believe that God can do more with the 90% with his blessings than if we had the entire 100% without his blessings. But there's another promise that God gives us. He says this. In Malachi 3, verses 10 and 11, he promised, he said, I will prevent when we do this, when we bring the tithe to the storehouse, that there may be food in his house. He said, I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops. I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. So God promises protection. Not only is this blessed, not only is my farm and my harvest blessed, my house blessed, but God says, I'm going to give you some protection as well. I'm going to send protectors to keep the devourer from devouring your crops. You need to go wrong throughout the day? It's going to happen. Listen, things are going to come at you. You're going to get attacked. The car is going to break down. <laughs> Listen, bills are going to pile up. Unexpected bills, sickness, you name it. All of these things, drought, inflation, 
whatever. The, somebody may lose a job. Doesn't matter what may happen. Things are going to try to come in, try to creep in to get to my house. But God promises my protection and says that I will be victorious. With his protection. Things are going to come. Attacks are going to come. Unexpected adversity is going to come. Man, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, Polly's transmission blew up in her car. Just unexpected stuff just happens, right? But God says, I'm not going to let anybody touch your house. God says, it'll work out. It'll work out. You don't have to worry. You've been faithful, and I will be faithful. I'll make a way when there seems to be no other way. However, here's what happens so often. So often, if we're not careful, we forget about this promise. We just wonder, why is it that it seems, like like the Bible says, why is it that it seems that our purses have holes in them, that the money just seems to just go right through it, and it just seems that there's never enough. Many times, it's because we haven't been obedient. It's because we haven't put our faith in our trust. We've relied more on what we can do with, the, with our money than what God can do in his covenant promise of protection and blessing. And so many times, here's what happens. Many times we go, man, I don't know. You know, gas prices are going up. Inflation. Uh, I don't know if I can trust God with this little bit. I don't know if I can give God this much. You know, I think I might just need to keep this for myself. I think I just might need to play catch up on retirement, so I don't know if I can give the full tithe to God. I think I may need that for myself. I think with the way this world is going, I might better save a little bit more for me. And we begin to rob God and take from God's for ourselves. He said, you rob me. How do I rob you? In tithes and offerings. Because we trust more in ourselves than we trust in God. And what happens? The devourer has full reign on what what was once protected. Would you give our protectors a big hand this morning. Romans 5, 8 says this, but God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. You know what that, you know what that says to me? It says that God doesn't ask anything of us that he already hasn't done himself. That he gave his first. He gave his first fruits offering. He gave his his first and best to us first. And trusted that we would put our faith in him. He hoped that we would put our faith in him. He had no assurance. There was no guarantee that we would love him back. Yet he hoped that we would love him and trust him. So he gave the best he had for us. How can we, in response, not give our very best to him? How can we not trust him with everything, including our money? How can we not trust him with everything and believe that he will come through on his promise to us? We're going to do something now that We do every year at this time of year, once a year here at our church. We call it the tithe challenge. The guys are going to come by and they're going to pass out a card like this to you. 
And I want to just preface this by saying that there is absolutely zero pressure coming from me, from our church, on anyone to participate. I want to explain it to you, and I want to leave it up to you what you're going to do with this. I want everybody to take one of these cards, and, and when, you, when you have it, I'm going to explain it to you. Again, this is, a, this is a sermon, a message this morning that it's not about money. It's not about getting your money or getting more money from you. It's about your heart. It's about a trust issue that many of us have with the God who gave us everything. So if everybody has a card, I want to explain the tithe challenge to you. And here's what it says. The only person in this room that is, that is maybe a, at all taking any kind of risk is, is me. And I'll explain why. Here's what the tithe challenge says. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. So here's... Here's the tithe challenge. Number one, sign God's guarantee to give 10% of your income or your increase for a, a period of 90 days. This is a 90-day tithe challenge that I want to personally challenge you with. Each time you receive your paycheck, each time you receive your increase, you bring 10%. Again, the Lord said, bring it. You don't give the tithe. You Bring it to the storehouse. Bring the tithe, 10% to the Lord, to Neighborhood Church. Marking it tithe, if you give in, per, in person, you mark it tithe on the tithe envelope. So that we, we know that this is, this is what you're committed to. This is what you're doing. You're taking this challenge. Marking it tithe on the giving envelope. Or you can give online at myneighborhoodchurch.live. You can designated as your tithe there or through the giving kiosk in the lobby. Here's the guarantee. The guarantee is that if at the end of 90 days you feel that your decision was a mistake or that it created a financial crisis or that you did not receive a blessing through this, we will promptly give you back all of your money. Been doing this for about nine years now here at our church, and I've never had one person come and say, Pastor, I, I want my money back. God didn't bless. He didn't move in ways I didn't expect. I didn't see. He didn't bless my family. He didn't bless my household. He didn't bless my family. Never had it happen. And I'm not worried about it happening this time. If it does, I'll give you your money back, but I'm not worried about it this time because this isn't a promise that I have to back. It's a promise that he has to back. This is his challenge to us. He said, test me in this. Test me in this. So again, this is a, this is a challenge not of, your, not of your finances. It's a challenge of our hearts. It's a challenge of your faith. And it's a challenge of your heart. Do I really trust that God can provide for me? Do I really trust that God can do more with my money than I'm capable of doing? This is the challenge, the tithe challenge. Here's what we ask you to do. This little card is perforated. So the bottom half says this, says this. Recognizing God's ownership and my stewardship and wanting the blessings promised, I hereby choose to accept God's challenge. For 90 days, and then you choose. There's three little boxes there. There's three, three little boxes to choose from. This is your mission, should you choose to accept. For 90 days, I will begin tithing, or I will continue to tithe, or I will set a giving goal even above my tithe. We have many people in our church that even give above and beyond their tithe. It's called offerings. It's called free will offerings and gifts. It's called the gift of generosity. 
And then you just put your name and your contact information there and sign it. And here's why I want you to do that. I want you to give, give me your, your name and your contact information there, especially an email address and your name, because throughout the next three months, throughout the next 90 days, I want to send you a message. I want to send you an email just to encourage you, just to send you some scripture to stand on and to, to, to read and to make a part of your daily lives. So I encourage you right now to fill this out, tear it off. You keep the top half, drop the bottom half in the offering, in the baskets as you leave. You can leave it, if you're leaving an offering, you can leave this with it. Give it to the guys at the doors. It's our protectors. It's our, it's our security team, our bouncers. So they're not going to let you leave unless you leave something. In it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let them out, guys. Um, but um, tear the bottom half off. Leave it with us at the door. Every single week in our staff meetings, we're going to pray over you. We're going to pray over you. Every person that turns in this card, we're going to pray that God will pour out a blessing that you cannot even contain. Does that mean he's, gonna, he's just going to pour money into your, into your bank account? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that he will show up in tangible ways. He will make himself known and make himself real to you. There may be financial blessings. There may be other kinds and types of blessings, but you will see God actively move in your lives. I believe that with all of my life, with all of my heart. So I challenge you this morning, fill it out, tear it off, and leave it on your way out this morning. Can we stand together? I know this has been a different kind of message this morning, but I believe with all my heart, it's a message that has the potential to change your life drastically, to change your life drastically. Do I really trust God? How much do I trust Him? I want to pray over you this morning before we go and just ask God to give you the faith to believe and the faith and the strength to act on that belief. Would you pray with me? Father, we love you so much today. God, we just thank you. Thank you that you loved us enough to give your son to us first, to give us the very best that you had to offer, not second best, not, not what was left over, but... God, the very best that you had, you gave to us first in hopes that we would trust you, in hopes that we would put our faith and our trust and our lives in your hands. And Father, today I just pray for your church. I pray for these precious people, God, my friends. I pray that you would just bless them with faith to believe, faith to trust you like they've never trusted you before, Lord, in every part of their lives, Lord, Lord, that they would put total confidence and faith and trust in you, Lord. And God, I pray that as a result, God, that you make yourself known to them like you never have before, that you bless them. God, I pray for financial blessings. I pray, I pray for healings and, and physical miracles, Lord. I pray for, for relationships to be healed and mended, Lord Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just make a way where there seems to be no way, that you would remind them that as attacks come, because you, you didn't say they wouldn't come. You said that when they do, that you would protect, that you would make a way, that we would not be devoured, that you would see us through no matter what. And so many times, God, you have done that for me. And I'm so thankful. And God, I pray that you would show yourself and make yourself known. Most of all, make the love that you have for your people known to each and every one of them in a greater way than they've ever known before. We ask this today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, God loves you, and he is for you. He is for you. Turn to somebody and say, he's for you. He is for you. He is not against you. He doesn't want you to give that little pile over there so that you can suffer or so that you can be destroyed. He wants you to give that little bit over there so that he can bless you so that you can thrive and so that you can walk 
in obedience to him. God bless you. Anybody likes fruits and vegetables, I eat very little of any of this stuff. <laughs> any of it. Maybe the sweet potato with lots of sugar and cinnamon and butter. But if you want to hang around to the end of the second service this morning, we're just going to give all this away to anybody who would like some. So um, if not, God bless you. I'm praying for you. Turn in your card on your way out. I can promise you our entire staff will be praying for you this week. God bless you. God will be Jesus to somebody this week. Cantaloupes in this bag.